Hello everyone. Uh, hey, I've uh, been thinking for the last couple of weeks and it kind of came to me today. You know, um, I remember back in the day when I was um, when I was fight, still fighting, kickboxing and boxing, you know, um, me and my buddy Marty and Scott, we, uh, you know, trained together and we started our fight, you know, deal together. Um, but each time we had a fight, we'd always be trying to get a videotape of who we were fighting and um it wasn't it was hard to come by back then you know what i mean it wasn't like today where everybody's got a camcorder or flip video i mean it was very difficult to get hold of a, a videotape and um but you know if we could get it we felt like we definitely had the edge you know we just you know what does this guy do is he got good hands good feet you know what does he move well is he short stocky tall lanky you know what's his deal um, is he fast? You know, what, what is his, what's his game plan? You know, we knew we, we could get the edge if we could see him once. And, um, and him, you know, and you see that in, in football too. I mean, how many times you, do you hear, you know, other coaches and players praise other players and coaches, you know, and they say he's always in the, at that camp he's always there studying film he's the first one there he's the last one to leave studying film studying their opponent and because if we know our opponent um we have a better chance of defeating our opponent and our victory only comes through jesus christ against the devil um on our own we cannot stand a chance we do not stand a chance zero chance but that doesn't mean we don't need to know our enemy, our adversary, our opponent. And I think that our evangelism um, in this country, so many people have the put up their hand approach. Yeah, I'd heard that, you know, save it. And I think that is definitely wrapped up in the fact that people are lulled to sleep to the reality of the enemy. I remember back in the day when I watched this movie, um, uh, Usual Suspects, and there's this, the, this character, at the main character, that mysterious character that nobody knew what was, uh, I think it was called, his name was Kaiser Sosa or Sose or something like that. And they said something in that movie, they said, the greatest trick Kaiser Sosa ever did was convince the world he didn't exist. And that is definitely what Satan has done between the distractions and the confusion he's also deceived people into thinking he doesn't exist so what is the word i thought today we'd take a look at what does the word say about our enemy um the first the, i'm sorry the last half of john 8:44 says he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it some versions say when he speaks lies he speaks his native tongue okay so he's a murderer a liar and deceiver okay first john 3 8 says he who sins is of the devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For his, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3.10 says, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Now before we read the rest of that, let's, let's take a look at the... the, um, the uh, I'm drawing a blank. What does it mean? When you know what the, the meaning of a word. Um, okay, manifest. It says, plain, open, clearly visible to the eye or obvious to the understanding. Apparent, not obscure, obscure or difficult to be seen or understood. From the testimony, the truth we conceive to be manifest. Okay, that's the definition. That's what I was looking for. That's the definition of manifest. So let's read this again, 1 John 3.10. In this, the children of God and the children of de the devil are manifest. So 
the rest of the verse is going to tell us how we know, how it is obvious, how it is visible and clear to our understanding who is of God and who is of the devil. It's going to be manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Okay? So do you practice righteousness? Okay, now 1 John 5, 19 says we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one okay some versions say under the influence of the devil okay but um, that's that's the deal the world is under the sway or the influence of Satan um, so these people that are convinced he doesn't exist or not, they're not concerned with it they're blinded to it. Their eyes have not been opened to the reality and the truth. Okay, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. So that's just what we just talked about. That um, they're, those that are perishing, their eyes have been veiled to the truth. They're blind to it. Okay, um, Ephesians 2, 1 says, And... And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. And then verse 2, In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Genesis 3.1 Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. So now we know he's a liar, he's deceiving, he's swaying and influencing the world, and he's more cunning than any beast of the field. You think about that. I mean, you think about um, the animals out there, say in the jungle. I mean, they do some pretty cunning things to eat, to survive. But they don't even, they're not even close to Satan. Again, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree, uh, shall not eat of every tree in, of the garden? Notice how now he wants to have a conversation. He's like, Hey, you know, let me put that doubt in there. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of eat the fruit of the trees of the garden but of the tree the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said you shall not eat eat it nor shall you touch it lest you die and check out what the snake does Satan then the serpent said to the woman you shall you will not surely die just just that slickness you know and he knew God wasn't talking about a, a physical death right there on the spot, but a spiritual death. But he says that to the woman. For, and he continues, For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And just like Satan wanted to replace God, and he wanted to be numero uno, he appeals to our flesh, suggesting that we are so important. I remember one time when, when I was in the prison, this guy Michael, he had gotten saved like six, eight months before I inter was introduced to him or met him. And the wisdom, godly wisdom he had, you, would, you could have swore he had been saved for 18 years. I mean, he was a giant in the Word, he, and he loved the Lord. But in this time of transitioning out of the flesh and into the Spirit, he went to one of the counselors complaining about this or complaining about that. And Bruce stopped Michael in his tracks, and he said, Michael, whoever said this is about you? And his point is, it isn't about us, but Satan wants to make us think it's about us. We are wretched sinners deserving of eternal condemnation. It's not about us, it's about him and surrendering to him. His will be done. Okay, that's it. Think about that. That's one of the number one things in the prayer that he had for us was, Your will be done, Lord, not mine. 
God bless you all. We'll see you all.